the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. If you grew up in, mostly in the West, uh, but if you grew up in a Christian culture or a Christian adjacent culture, there's really no escaping the number and the proliferation of the saints that we identify. We have so many, in fact, that we have to have this catch-all day where just in case there are some that we've left out, we make sure that we have a feast day for them too. That's what All Saints Day is really about. We have the famous ones that we follow. We look to their example, right? Because we all want to get whatever it is that they have. What is it that they have? They have this thing that Isaiah is talking about in this lesson today. That's one of them now. <laughs> um, in any case, what do they have? To, what do they have? To, what, what do they have that we lack? They have this thing that Isaiah is talking about in this lesson we have. This feast. That he's preparing on the mountain of the Lord's house. A rich feast. A lot of meat. Not so much for me. But a lot of wine. A lot of marrow. A lot of fatness. A lot of things that are meant for everyone who's there to enjoy. And let's be honest. What we really want is a piece of that feast. And I have a theory about that feast. My theory about that feast is... That all of us are going to be there. And the question is whether we're going to like it when we get there or not. Because you see at the feast, at the heavenly banquet, there are going to be place cards. And you're going to be seated next to somebody. You may or may not be crazy about having to spend all eternity sitting next to them. But they're going to be there. And it's our job. To do whatever it is that these saints did to make that a good thing. It's why we follow the saints. It's why we follow their examples, right? We've got a lot of the more famous ones, the, the martyrs, right, who died uh, in the arena with the lions. The, um, you have St. Francis who loved nature so much and decided he was going to go and Preach to birds and to the wolf of Gubbio. We have these wonderful stories. We have the stories of the Jesuits who came across the ocean to this side, went up and down the St. Lawrence with nothing but the good news of Jesus with them. We have the saints who saw visions who wrote hymns about what that heavenly banquet might be like. And we want to make ourselves like that. Now, not all of us are going to have our name remembered, but there will be those of us that it will be known that whoever met us in this life will have seen some kind of love in us. Not that makes them want to possess something else, but makes them want to love more. A love in us that makes them want to love other people more, that makes them want to be like us. And so the question is, what is it we have to do to make ourselves that way? It's the question we ask ourselves. When we think of the saints, which of the saints am I going to follow? Which of the saints am I going to uh, imitate so that I can reach this place where God wants me at that banquet as well? What am I going to do? Am I going to study? Am I going to learn how to believe all the right things? That can be profitable. Am I going to give myself over to feeding all the hungry that I can? 
that can be profitable too. That will help. It changes you. But when it comes to what you have to do to be one of the saints, I think the most important thing is to realize what it is that Jesus does for Lazarus. Jesus has come, his friend, he's known his friend is sick. His sisters are sending messages, our brother's sick, our brother is sick. Will you come? Because they know that being around Jesus makes us better, makes us whole, heals us. Because there is plenty of evidence of that in all of the stories of Jesus, all the way up to this one. And yet, when Jesus arrives, Lazarus has died. He's not asleep. He's not faking it. Lazarus has died. So what is Jesus going to do for him? Jesus raises Lazarus. Why? Because he loves Lazarus and because he wants to. Whatever it is that you need to hear from Jesus to make you want to be on the mount of the Lord's house at that banquet, seated with all the people who are there. It's nothing that you are going to do yourself. It's nothing you are going to white knuckle it and hang on and do the right things for long enough until you've made it. Jesus is going to do these things for you because he wants to. I want you to let that sink in. Jesus is, and God, Jesus as God is not running a machine that cranks out saints. He's not giving a system for us to follow that cranks out saints. Jesus makes each one of us, makes each one of you holy. Why? Not because he needs to, but because Jesus loves you that much and he wants to do that for you. Lazarus, obviously his friend, he wanted to be with. Now this isn't the same thing as the resurrection that Jesus does. Jesus brought Lazarus back to life because he wanted to. Lazarus, we presume, died yet again, but will raise up with all of us when the time comes. Jesus isn't doing this because he has to. God doesn't do this because this is the way the universe he created has to unfold. This God is a person who is like us in all things, and he's doing it because he loves you that much, that he wants to do that. That's what inspired the way that these saints have shown us. It inspired the example of these saints. The saints that are worth following are the ones who've seen a love so great that they could not help but be want to be a part of that as well. The love that they saw, the love that Jesus gave to them, changed them. The love that Jesus offers to you changes you. It makes you want to be more like Jesus and more like the people you've seen in your life that have seen that love too. There are all kinds of things you can make yourself do. Jesus does the things he does because he wants to do them. And when you can love and be loved like Jesus loves you, you can do those things too. Who's supposed to be a saint? All of you, all of us are 
called to be a saint. It just means we've been made holy, not by anything that we've done, but because Jesus has wanted to do that. We have a feast day for all of these other saints. October 4th we did, we blessed animals and we thought about St. Francis. A few weeks ago we talked about St. Luke, you know, the patron of artists and things like that, doctors as well. But what do we celebrate when we celebrate these saints? We celebrate what we're celebrating today. It's the feast of all saints. Because for this world that God created, God so loved it, that he sent his only begotten son, right? And Jesus loves that world because he does. Because he wants to. Because he loves you that much. Glory to God, his power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever. Amen. Amen.